this down. Thank you, God, that we can count on you for our every need. What is up, HSM? So excited to be back with you tonight on HSM Tuesday nights. I want to let you guys know something getting into tonight. First of all, uh, I'm losing my voice. I just got back from a wedding a couple days ago, and the dance floor was crazy. I was yelling Dixieland Delight and Sweet Home Alabama all day long, and so my voice is kind of gone from that. So um, just stick with me through tonight. I think it's good enough to where I'm not going to really lose it, but just in case, just want to let you know. Also, I want to preface tonight's message by saying that I'm recording it on Tuesday, June 2nd. Okay, we're right in the midst of kind of the mess of all of this stuff involving Minneapolis and, you know, the riots and all that stuff. And so this message really relates to this season that we're in. And so I want us to make sure that we remember that. Last week, I recorded a message that really goes into the topic of racism um, and kind of the state of our country right now, but I didn't know it was all going to happen, so I didn't preface it. So I just, I don't know what's going to happen in the next week. So I just want to make sure that you understand that as I'm recording this message, we're in the midst of everything. And I want you to hear it through those ears. I also want you to hear it knowing that this really applies to every area of our life. And I'm really excited about the message that the Lord put on my heart today. He put this message on my heart a while back, but it really started to uh, stick out to me the last couple of days as I was seeing stuff through social media. So I'm gonna dive right in. I'm gonna pray for us and then we're, we're gonna get to it. So let's pray. Dear God, we love you today. I thank you so much for these students. I pray for protection over them. Um, dear Lord, I pray that you just protect our church, you protect our houses, you protect our cars, our properties, dear Lord. I also pray that you protect our people, dear Lord. You protect our people from injustice. You protect all races as we are all created equally in your eyes, dear Lord. I pray that you lead us and guide us with how to love, how to lead, how to stand for justice, but how to do it without bitterness or anger to God. So right now we lift you up. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So a couple years ago when I was in college, I got a chance to go on a missions trip to Moldova. If you never heard of Moldova, that's okay. I, I'd never heard it before I went. But Moldova is this really small European country sandwiched right between Russia and Ukraine. It's, it's, it's in a really interesting place of the world. Nevertheless, though, it's beautiful. It's, it's really cool. Some of it looks like what Russia might look like in a movie, right? Some concrete buildings, some old cars, and the mafia, which, believe it or not, the mafia was really there. We had a lot of run-ins with them. It was crazy. But at the same time, parts of Moldova looks kind of like what the countryside of Italy might look like in most movies, right? Rolling hills, shepherds, farmers, sheep, etc., all that stuff. And, and that's kind of the part that we were staying in during the trip. We were staying in a compound in kind of the farmland of Moldova. So every night, we'd go out into this field in our compound, and we'd hang out with some of the orphans that were staying there. And the stars out there were insane. I'm talking like thousands and thousands of stars because for the most part, there were no lights around there to kind of pollute the night sky. So it was, it was beautiful. So they taught us, these orphans, they taught us one of their favorite games called star tripping. Now, before I tell this story, I need to make something clear. I do not condone this game. I, I do not suggest you and your friends go out and go star tripping. Okay, I had a friend break his shoulder doing this one year. So, so I do not encourage you or condone this game. But what it was, we played it there. Someone stood by themselves kind of about 40 yards away from everyone else, right? In the middle of the field. And the rest of us, we would we'd kind of stand next to each other and we'd say, all right, and Mark, get set, go. And that one person who was by themselves, they would look up and they'd start spinning in a circle like that. Okay, that's kind of what they would do. Meanwhile, someone in the group is counting down slowly from 30. And finally, when we said zero, the person who was spinning around, they'd stop and they'd run straight at us. Someone would hold a flashlight, shine at them, and they, that person would run straight at us. The person, I mean, sprinting as fast as they could, their goal was to get from spinning to the flashlight as possible, as fast as possible. Guys, I promise you, I have never hit the ground harder, right? We've all been kind of dizzy and you're kind of like trying to catch yourself or whatever, but, but this isn't that. This isn't that. When you start running, it looks like you're upright. It looks like you're running in one direction. But before you realize it, you are on the ground and it is violent. Like you dive at the ground, almost like you're running through the ground. Like you might as well jump off of a diving board straight in the ground. It hurts so much, but it was so much fun. But why did that happen in that moment? Why, why does that game do that to you? Because when you're looking up at the stars, right, you're seeing thousands of points of light. 
they're here, they're there, they're here, they're there, all this stuff. And when you start spinning, all the points of light kind of start to mesh together, kind of start to, to consume you a little bit and you're just focused on all of these lights and they're spinning around all this. If you don't know which way is up, which way is down, left, right, you just see a thousand little dots spinning around you. Then when you try to focus on the light in front of you and you try to run at it, your eyes are just used to focusing on a thousand different points rather than on just one. And so it can't quite focus on just one, right? It's just, you can't quite focus on the flashlight in front of you. You're so focused and you're so used to seeing all these lights, all this stuff, you can't quite do it. And then your feet, they're used to spinning and spinning and spinning in a circle. And we try to adjust and go in one direction. It doesn't work. Playing this game, it taught me to be aware of what I'm allowing into my life. Because when I allow myself to focus on the thousands around me, it's impossible for me to focus on the one that really matters, which is my God. So I gotta, I, I gotta make sure that rather than focusing on the thousands, on the opinions, on the people around me, I'm focusing on the one. According to a few studies that I, I kind of studied this week, over 57% of you right now are spending anywhere from four to 10 hours a day on social media, on the, focusing on the four main ones, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and YouTube. 57% of you, over four hours between four and 10. That means that more than half of you are spending the majority of your lives on social media. Every single day, you're waking up and your day is eaten away by looking at what others are saying and doing. Even, even if you're on the lesser of that, let's, let's say you're one of those few people who are spending four hours a day or less. Let's say four. That right there is a fourth of your day. Okay, most people are sleeping eight hours a day. Some of you aren't sleeping that much. A lot of you are sleeping probably more than that. But let's say you're sleeping eight hours a day. That means that your rest of your day is 16 hours. And if you just spend four hours on social media, that's a fourth of your day. That's a fourth of those 16 hours that you're scrolling through Instagram. If you're eight hours a day, that's half, half of your day. Half of your life is spent on your phone. Let's break it down like this. Let's say that you're at six hours. Okay, let's say six hours a day you're on your phone. And I think that's most of us. That's like the average of what the normal person is on their phone a day. Let's say we're six hours on social media. Two of those hours, let's say you spend on Instagram alone. Let's say that every one minute you're on Instagram, you see one opinion. One person posts about what's going on, one celebrity making a statement, one influencer telling you what to do, what to say, or what to believe or whatever. One friend reposting a cool graphic that they saw that says Black Lives Matter or All Lives Matter or Love is Love or this or that. One a minute. Let's say you, say you see one a minute. You just took in 120 different opinions in one day. Some might be the same, some might be different, some you may agree with, some you may disagree with, but either way, that's 120 opinions, 120 statements, stances, beliefs, whatever you wanna call them, 120 of them. And they're forming the way you think and live. You may not realize it, but it's, it's, it's forming your mind, your thoughts, your actions. Look at Matthew 6, 22 here. It says, it says, the eye is the lamp of the body. The eye is the lamp of the body. In other words, what you see is what defines the inner workings of who you are. Think, think about when you put on sunglasses with a kind of a color tint on it, like you put on some blue sunglasses. At first, you realize everything's blue, right? It turns everything kind of this off shade of blue, like that green grass is now a greenish bluish grass, right? It's like, it's like not really green, it's like greenish blue. That red house, it's now a reddish bluish house. It's notice, it noticeably changes your perspective on things. And in the same way, what we look at and what we consume every single day, it's tinting the way that we see every single thing around us, just like those sunglasses. And unfortunately, it affects every area of lives, not just the way that we perceive every area. Look, look at that very next verse, Matthew 6, 23. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be. It'll be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? See, not only is what you're looking at corrupting the way you see things, but it says your whole body will be full of darkness. What you see, what you consume, what you're taking in, what you're looking on Instagram, what you fill yourself with is defining who you are. And most of us have gone blind to the severity of what we're consuming, what we're looking at. We think it's just, we just think it's just stuff, but we've gone blind to it. Just like those tin glasses. At first, when you put them on, everything's noticeably blue. You, you, you recognize it. But the longer I wear those glasses, the longer I wear them, the more that I forget that the glasses are changing the color of everything around me. The more I, I just kind of think everything's just this color. I just begin to accept that that's the way that everything is because that's how I'm seeing it. When you're constantly seeing through the tinted filter of everyone else's opinion, what everyone else is saying and doing and thinking, 
you begin, you begin to forget that you're not seeing clearly and you adopt those filters as truth. You adopt their opinions as truth. That's what's happening to us when we're consumed with social media like most of us are. God never designed us to see people, places, things, events, moments, or even really life through the filter of what everyone else is seeing at us. He didn't design us to see it the way that everyone else did. By looking at life through the tinted filter of everyone else, we're distorting God's creation. We're distorting God's people. We're distorting God's plan. No, he gave us a clear filter to look through. A filter that doesn't distort but clarifies, okay? One that allows us to see people for who they are and not for the color of the skin. One that allows us to see everything in its purest form. And, that's a big one, one that allows us to discern and to see the difference between good and bad. There's a lot of stuff up there in debate, what's good, what's bad. The filter that God gives us clarifies that. Look at 2 Corinthians 5.16. From now on then, we don't know anyone from a worldly perspective. Even if we've known Christ from a worldly perspective, yet now we no longer know him in this way. Our world has a tendency to see the worst in people. I talked about this a few weeks ago. We see them by the color of their skin or we see the hateful people as hateful people, right? We see them the way that the world sees them. And my biggest pet peeve about this whole thing on social media right now, uh, can I be honest with you, is how quickly people are to point fingers. You know what? You're a racist if you say this. You're a racist if you do that. If you don't say anything, you're a part of the problem. Like, speak up or you're a part of the problem. If you're breaking into buildings, then you're not helping. Like, okay, I agree, but can we please just stop pointing fingers and start saying all of this through the perspective that the Lord gives us? Let's stop pointing fingers. Let's stop blaming people. Let's stop saying, if you say this, you're racist. If you do this, you're not like whatever. Because the opinions of the thousands are distorting who we are. But the love of our God is clarifying who we were meant to be. That's good. I'm going to say that again. The opinions of thousands are distorting who we are. But the love that our God has for us, the love of our God, it's clarifying who we were meant to be. But how, how do we change our perspectives then? Because if we're looking at the example of the star tripping, when we try to switch from the perspective of thousands to the one, the stars to the flashlight, then we fall. Now, see, the problem is that with that game... You're not trying to switch perspectives, you're trying to balance them, right? And that leads to ending face down in the dirt. In that game, you're focusing on the stars, on the thousands. And then you go on to the light. You're saying, you know what? I want this and I want that. I'm going to look at all this and I'm going to look at that. And it's impossible to do that because they don't mesh. They're supposed to be separated. The problem is that we're trying to balance God's perspective and the world's perspective, and that's impossible to do. So instead, what we need to do instead of balancing We need to prioritize. You see, some of us have tried to relearn how to view the world. I don't know if you've ever done that, but you try to relearn how do you view people, all this stuff. But we're still more influenced by everyone else. Why? Because what we look at first influences everything else. When you look at the stars first, when you spin around all that stuff, and then you switch to the flashlight, the flashlight is spinning. Why? Because you were looking at the stars first. And that defined the way the flashlight was going to be. But if you've ever looked at a bright light, if you ever looked at a flashlight or, or, you know, a uh, car headlights or whatever, and then try to look at stars, you can't see them. Right? That bright light drowns them out. I never thought I'd use stars to symbolize toxic things that we allow in our lives, but here we are. But think about it. Think about it. What we look at first will define everything else. It'll define everything else. Matthew 6, 33, one of my favorite verses. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Seek first, not just seek, seek first. Recently, I've been getting up earlier and earlier every day to kind of get a head start on the day. I've been really busy. Usually I've been getting up around 5.30 or 6. And when I do, I have a tendency to want to stay in bed for just a few minutes and just kind of scroll, right? Just, uh, I don't want to get up yet, so just, you know what? And so I kind of got into this bad habit of scrolling through Instagram for like 10, 15 minutes, no big deal. Then I'd get up and I'd shower, I'd do my quiet time. So what, right? That's, that's like 10, 15 minutes. So what, what's the big deal? What I'm doing is that I'm looking at the stars before I look at the flashlight. And we all know how that ends up. All right? And I don't even follow crap on Instagram. Like, I really don't. I don't really follow celebrities. Uh, I don't really follow influencers. In fact, I don't think I follow any influencers or whatever you want to call them. But even though most of it's not crap, it's still people. And when you look at the opinions of people before you look at the truth of God, we start to see opinions as truth and truth as opinions. Come on, I'm preaching. 
And that happened. I, I, I started to be consumed by what people were saying and doing during this whole thing. And I kind of, I kind of, you know, oh, I, maybe I should post this because I see other people doing that. Maybe I should say this. Maybe I should believe this, whatever. And I kind of forgot to take a second and say, God, what do you think about all this? Like, I, I, have, you, have you asked God, like, what do you think about all this, God? Have you talked to him and said, what do you want me to do here? Because truthfully, I've prayed about it. Like I've, I've been praying for our country, I've been praying for our city and all that stuff, but even in the midst of me praying for it, I was still constantly making my decisions of how I'd handle it based off of what everyone else was doing. I was following pastors, I was following people, I was seeing what they were doing, you know, politically, who lined up with me, all this stuff, and I was just like, okay, like that makes sense, this, this feels right, this feels good, all this stuff. But the truth was, I never really took a second and just said, you know what, God, what do you want me to do? And if I did, it was after I'd already looked at social media. And it started, the way that I saw things, the way that I consumed things, kind of started to shape the way that I was living. So what I did is I made it a priority to go to God before I go to social media. Because I don't want opinions to define truth. I want truth to define truth. With all the time that you've spent on social media reading about Minneapolis, how many, how many times, how much time have you spent going to God about it? For a lot of us, we've been wearing those filtered glasses for way too long. It's time to take them off. And I think the best way to do that is just to get off of our social media for some time. Right? I'm, not, I'm not really asking you to delete Instagram forever, social media forever, at least for some time though. Because sometimes to refocus on what's true, you need to completely step away from what's false. Then, only then, will the truth begin to come back into focus. See, the thing is, is we've been wearing those glasses too long. We've been spinning in the stars too long and all of a sudden we try to readjust the, the light, the flashlight, the truth of God, the love of God that we try to run at, the opinion, the truth that he has for us, it starts to kind of mesh with everything else. All of a sudden, the light doesn't really look like a light. It looks kind of like the rest of the stars, and we don't know how to differentiate. I don't know if that's a word right there. I think it is, but I'm making up words all the time. Um, Mason called me out for it the other day. I can't remember what word I said, but he called me out for it. Anyway, the more that we spend doing that and then try to f switch to the light, the truth, they kind of mesh together. We can't really tell the difference between them. There we go. So I think what's so important for us is for us to just step away, remove the crap, the thousands, to not let ourselves be defined, to not let our thoughts, our minds, our actions be defined by what everyone else is saying, but just go to the one person who has truth. Because the truth is, those thousands, even if we agree with most of them, they, for the most part, don't have the love that we have in our hearts. Because it's not just about the order in which you consume things. It's also about what you consume entirely. Look at this verse right here with me, uh, famous verse, Philippians 4.8. It says this, finally, brothers, whatever's true, whatever's just, whatever's honorable, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever's commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. I don't care how much time you spend on social media. I don't care, I don't care if it's an hour, if it's five hours, if five minutes, if you don't have social media, I don't care what it is. But I promise you that the majority of what you're consuming doesn't fit into any of those categories. It's not true, it's not just, it's not pure. I think it's time that we step away from those things for a while and consume what God's saying. What if, what if we begin to let that light define us? What if we begin to let that light define everything else? It would begin to make a difference, not just, not just in everyone else, but in you as well. I have a thought, maybe, just maybe, one of the reasons that you can't seem to overcome your addiction is because you're constantly consuming things that are feeding into it. I was on TikTok the other day. Just, I was scrolling through just to see um, you know, some ideas for what I might be able to post for you guys. I'm really trying to make good content for y'all. Y'all love seeing me on TikTok, that's great, whatever. But I was on it five minutes and it was awful how many posts I saw of girls throwing their bodies around. Like I, I know you, I sound like an old man right now, but like how awful it was to see so many girls using their sexuality as a pool to get likes and reposts or whatever you wanna call them. How many guys I saw, you know, making sex jokes and all this stuff, how many, I can't tell you how awful it was for me to get on that, that account and think about how many of my students are on there because I know that it's hurting you. You might not realize that, you, you, might not, you might separate that and porn, 
But the truth is that is feeding into your porn addiction because what that is doing is that is allowing you to view lustfully upon people and it's feeding in your desire to see more. Get off of it for a bit. Maybe that's one of the reasons why you can't break it because everything that you're consuming is pointing you towards that thing. Get away from it. Guard your heart. Guard the things that are coming. Your eyes are a lamp into the body. Get away from that stuff. Don't let anything like that back into your body. Twitter, Instagram, it's, it's full of posts about what life should look like. About what, how people are living, about how models look like, about who has this and who has that and all this stuff. Maybe, just maybe, the reason that you can't overcome your anxiety is because you're consuming posts. You're looking at posts. You're filling yourself with posts about what life should look like. And it's feeding in your anxiety because your life might not look like that. It's feeding into your anxiety rather than helping it. Get away from it. Separate that, self, that stuff from your life. Whoever you are, it's time to take your focus off of the thousands and focus on the one, on the truth. John 8, 31 through 32. So Jesus said this to the Jews who believed in him. That's us, by the way. We believe in him. If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. If you abide in my word, not if you abide in social media, if you abide in my word, then you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. Some of you watching right now, you've never even seen the light, right? You, you've always just lived life. You've just known that there's people around. You know that there's things that you know. It's just life. You're just focused on the stars. Maybe you're not even spinning. Maybe you're just looking at the light. I don't know. But you never knew that there was a truth. You never knew that there was light. You never knew that there was a God who loved you. You might have heard about him. You might have heard about Christians and seen people praying all stuff. You just assumed that that's just one of the lights because you never knew. It's time to open your eyes because the truth is there is a light. There is a truth. There is a love. And he's for you. Some of you, You've been so focused on the thousands. You've been so focused on the thousands. That's what I was. I knew that there was a light. I knew that there was a God. But I got so consumed with the thousands. Right? I, I had a conversation with someone not too long ago about the importance of raising kids in the church. A lot of people will say, you know, it's important not to do that because you need them to go and be exposed. You don't want to put them in a bubble. Have you ever heard that? that homeschoolers or, or Christians as a kid, they get put in a bubble and they're protected and they never experience life to the fullest. No, the truth is they're actually being raised in the light and they never get confused about the thousand, all that stuff. That was me. That was me. I, I was raised in a Christian home knowing that there was a God for me and I loved him. The truth is that slowly but surely I started to drift away. My focus came off of him, came off of that light, came off that truth and started to focus on everything out through people, through popularity, through the desire to be accepted. Come on, that's a big one for a lot of you. You just want people to like you. The, the desire to experience life to the fullest, like we think that living away from God is gonna be better than living with God. Trust me, it's not. Because I tried it. A lot of you are saying, I need to try it. Don't. Because my attention, my focus was drifted off of the truth, off of the love that my God had for me and onto those things, pornography. And I started to slowly spin and just focus on those things. And that's who I was. It was porn. It was people. It was popularity. It was sports. It was life. It was whatever you want to call it. It was opinions. It was social media. I just got consumed. And then slowly but surely, I started to kind of try to make my way back. But every single time, I ended up on the ground. Why? Because I was trying to balance. I was trying to balance. I was trying to say, I want this, I want that. What it took for me to come back to the Lord was to prioritize and to say, you know what? I got to separate myself from that. And I had to take steps. And, and different things along the way for porn, it, it was bringing people in on it. For the life, it was refocusing on what meant more to me, which was purpose. But for the most part, what it was is just separating myself from everything that was feeding into what I was going through. And that was social media, honestly, and it helped. I'm not challenging you to step away from social media for a long time. Try it for a day. Try it for a week. A few months ago, we did a 40-day fast, and some of you guys stepped away from social media for 40 days. And I've talked to you about it, and most of you started hesitantly. I can't do it, I don't wanna do it. But as I was talking to you through it, you kept telling me you didn't miss it. 
Why? Because it took you stepping away from it to realize how toxic it was in your life. Some of you have been that. Some of you have been focused on the thousand. It's time for you to refocus and watch how the truth's gonna set you free. And so with all of this stuff going on, with all of the racism, with all of the hate, with all of the pointing fingers, with all the social media stuff going on, I'm gonna challenge you. Take some time to step away from it and replace it with the Lord. Don't just step away from it. It's not just about removing stuff from your life. It's about replacing it with wholesome stuff in your life. Remove the opinions and replace it with truth. Watch how those tinted glasses will come off your face. Watch how you'll start to see things with clarity. Watch how God's truth clarifies. It doesn't distort. And then a lot of you, whether you've been focused on the stars or whether you never even knew the light was there, it's time for you just to say a prayer and just to come back to God. Maybe for the first time, maybe for the fifth time, maybe for the second time, I don't know. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna lead you in a prayer tonight. And what I'm really hoping for is that you just say, you know what, God, I just want that light. And it's gonna be a process to get back to it, to redraw that focus on it. But let me tell you something, this is the first step. You can remove social media all you want, but if you don't say this prayer, it's not gonna mean a thing. You can start making strides towards God, but it's not gonna mean a thing if you don't say a prayer, saying, God, I give my life to you. And so I'm gonna lead you in a prayer, and what's gonna happen? All that stuff that's drawn you away, if you've been consumed with people, with their opinions, with being accepted, with being liked, maybe it's with anxiety during this whole time, Maybe it's fear. Maybe fear's consuming you. You were scared during the protests. You were scared during quarantine. You were scared during the curfew. You're scared now because you don't know what the decision's going to mean. You've just been consumed by fear. Say this prayer and watch how that filter kind of com comes off your eyes because it'll give you boldness. We did a message about that last week. I'm going to say this prayer. I want you to repeat it after me. So right now, just whoever's watching, just say this prayer with me. Just say, Father God, I need you. God, come into my heart. I take my eyes off of the thousands and set my eye on you, the one. Redefine truth in me. Take away the opinions. Set my ears to hear you. Dear Lord, make me new. Wash me clean. I say yes to you today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. And if you said that prayer, that is such a powerful decision. You don't even know what's in store for you. I cannot wait to see things take place in your life. Also, guys, I want to let you know, as you're going forward from here, Hopefully you decide to get off social media for a day or two, maybe even a week. That's what I've done. I literally just deleted social media this morning. Hopefully you decide to refocus on the Lord. But as you do, don't do it alone. Jump into life groups. We have girls life groups and life groups going on right now. And you can join those. And guess what? That's, that's your next step, by the way. If you just said that prayer, you have two next steps. One, it's to get baptized, which we can talk about. And if you want to get baptized or you want some next steps, a Bible to read, whatever it is, make sure to text in the number that you can find in the comment section. <clears throat> and if you want to get in a life group, DM us. Email me at sawyerm at crossroadschurch.com. Text me 205-908-9559. Whatever it is, DM us at, at Instagram. But get in a life group because guess what? That's going to make it all the more easier to get your attention off of the thousands and onto the one. And, and it's so much fun. It really is. Uh, my life was changed in life groups. My best friends in the entire world I've done life groups with it will change your life. Do life groups, jump in on them. They're a whole lot of fun. But in the meantime, guys, I love you. Stay safe out there. I cannot wait to see you back in a couple of weeks at prom and at graduation. Hopefully, you're going to be at both of them. Uh, prom is going to be virtual, and then graduation is going to be on right here at the church. So make sure you join in for all of those. I love you guys. I will see you later. Back to whoever's doing our outro. Well, HSM, if you just prayed that prayer, go ahead and text amen to 69922. Once again, that's amen to 69922. We as a team would love to pray for you. We want to get you connected into a life group, and we just want to share some next steps for you so that you can grow deeper in your faith. Well, make sure you guys are following us on Instagram, especially if you're a senior, because tomorrow 
we're making an announcement on Instagram and that announcement is for a special in-person event that's only available to seniors. So make sure to follow us on there. Well, we're putting out content every day, guys. So we hope that you guys are following us on YouTube, on Instagram, and even on TikTok. Yes, guys, we are on there. That's Crossroads HSM if you wanna follow us on TikTok. Um, and we hope to see you guys next week on Monday at 6 p.m. where Pastor Sawyer will be doing a live Q&A. So you won't wanna miss that because you could have your questions answered. You never know. And so we hope to also see you guys at 7 p.m. on Tuesdays next week for our regular HSM service. So have a great week, guys. Be safe. That's all for today. Thank you.